Hey, for faces, it's Clary Berry. I just want to talk with you guys about um, the low carb craze. Everybody's talking about keto now, um, which is even more dangerous than like regular low carb, of course. And the, the the crazy part is, is that it seems to work for some people. And the crazy part is, there seems stop biting my nail. <laughs> um, sorry, talking to my little guinea pigs here. We're playing on the floor. Let me just show you guys what's going on got some laundry that needs to be done over there in the corner. I should probably take that out. Hi. Hi. How you doing? You want some food? You want a treat treat? Yeah. You want a treat? Who wants a treat? You get a treat. You get a treat. Everybody gets a treat. Are you guys cute or what? So, I just want to talk with you guys about this low carb stuff. And this is going to be probably my first video in many, um, kind of keto videos because I've done a lot of low carb videos already. If you go to my playlist, I have zero carb videos. I have low carb videos. I've done a lot of videos. So check out the playlist if you want to learn more before some of the rest of these videos come out. But I am planning on doing quite a bit. And this one is just going to be, does it work? Does keto work? And I think anybody who's really looked at keto you kind of have to admit that on some level it does work and this is the really confusing thing about it is that people are like well if it works then it's got to be good for you right because any weight loss is going to improve your biomarkers so it's got to work it's got to be good for you well no it can help you lose weight it can and despite what people say um, a, it's going to be mostly water weight. We've all seen it. Eight pounds in one month, 20 pounds, like real fast dropping weight. It's going to be water weight. And the heavier you are, the more water weight you're going to carry around. I've heard about people carrying 20 plus pounds, 30 up to 40 or 50 pounds, depending on how overweight or obese you are. Um, you can really carry a lot of water weight. And that is what is going away so fast at the beginning of your weight loss. And you can do that by many different ways not just low carb obviously and you can lose fat on it too i'm not saying you can't um but i think the main mechanism that you're doing this um and for most people the only mechanism is through calorie restriction and people will tell you oh well i'm not really calorie restricting i'm still eating this and this many calories well people don't usually count their calories every day first of all and second of all you know, when people go from not counting their calories, even if you are counting your calories, you're still going to be at a lower, you know, amount of calories than you probably were before you started the diet. And when you look at how many carbs are actually in things and you're trying to do keto, especially and not just low carb, you're looking at, I mean, what is it? Usually when I stay in under 20 or 40 grams of carbs a day, which is crazy to me. I eat that in one snack honestly it's just like okay like how can you possibly not eat low calorie while you're doing this it's impossible especially I mean yeah if you're eating a bunch of meat like a ton of meat your calories can add up but if you're health conscious at all if you're trying to get any type of vegetables I mean yeah there's some vegetables that you can have like tiny little pieces of and it's zero zero carbs but they're even with the the lowest of carb lettuces and stuff, you still can't have that much because there's some and it'll add up. Like you really have to be mindful of what your servings are and everything, even with lettuce, you know, your carbs will add up. So it's, and that's like lowest calorie, you know, plants that there are. So you have to really be honest with yourself and say, what would this look like calorie wise for me to only get that amount of carbs? And again, unless you're going completely zero carb and just doing like meat and dairy, your car your calories are going to uh, end up being smaller too. And just the way the human body is, we do need some carbs and you will go into a stroke if you don't have any carbs. And um, about 20 is about that threshold. That's why keto is conveniently placed at 20 grams of carbs per day because you do need, despite what these keto people say, it is an essential. Carbs are essential. Our bodies run off of glucose. That's a fact. Our brains run exclusively off glucose if given the choice. And I just feel like 
why would you not want to give your brain exactly what it wants? You know, before I go off on too much of a tangent that I'm going to save things for a later video, um, I just want to keep on going with, you know, kind of the main theme of this particular video, which is, does it work? And I think this is where I come into a lot of my issues with, with keto is that it does work, but at what expense? It does work short term, but the biggest thing, and studies document this, it's very hard for the average person to stick to it. It's not like whole food plant-based where you can eat as much as you want, where you get to satisfy your natural sweet tooth that you're born with, that everybody has. That, you know, it's just one of those things like eat, being able to eat as much vegetables as you want is actually very fulfilling and very satisfying. You get to fill your stomach up, big volume. Um, you can eat. And people think that meat is so satiating, but actually potatoes are the most satiating food. Carbs really have that brain, you know, serotonin thing going on where if you eat carbs, you feel happy. And, and, you know, then you have the bad breath and you have the headaches and you have all of that sort of thing that kind of add to, you know, you get your keto flu and these things, although they may subside after a while, it just kind of shows you that it's not the natural way to eat like when you eat high carb vegan you actually smell great and you're like you don't have to take as many showers as you used to or wear as much deodorant um and you, you just smell way better so and here's the thing does it work yes it works to lose weight but keto people are sacrificing their long-term health and it's not like they, most of them think that they are um but that they are because even though, and I always use this analogy, um, you can actually improve your blood labs and improve your biomarkers and your blood work and your blood labs, like I said, from losing weight off of cocaine. You really can. Your cholesterol will go down. Yeah, your good cholesterol will go up. Your HDL will go up. Your a your LDL will go down. You, you know your blood sugars will go down. It doesn't matter if you're just flat out starving. It's just like that's why people think fasting is so good for you because your blood work gets better. But is starving good long term? No, it's not. And starving essentially is what keto is. It's like tricking your body into starving. That's why we have people don't understand this. Um, because it's not really told, you know, when they're going to keto websites and thinking that keto is great, like, yeah, nudge me out of the way. Um, you know, people don't explain. Keto is actually a backup mechanism for our bodies to not starve when we don't have food. That's why we have keto. So you're manipulating your body and tricking your body into doing something using ketones, you know, for, oh my God, this is so freaking cute. I did not know she did this. Can you just do that again? Is that not the cutest thing? Oh my God, you guys are so freaking cute. They love this. <laughs> Oreo, you're so funny. Okay, oh my gosh. Seriously, so cute. Are you guys nibble nibbling? Are you nibble nibble? Okay, sorry. I know you didn't come here for the guinea pigs. You came here for the keto rants. <laughs> so where the hell was I? You lose, you know, you lose weight, your blood sugars will improve. You starve yourself short term, your blood work is going to get better because it takes a little while for your nutrient deficiencies to, to kick in. It takes a while for other, you know, it takes a while for heart disease, diabetes and stuff to kind of kick in. And here's the kicker is that when you improve these biomarkers, you are actually going to reduce your risk of diabetes. But people take the leap and say that at that point, keto is curing diabetes or preventing it, but it's really not because skinny people get diabetes. You can still get diabetes. Diabetes, if you actually do your research, is caused by excess fat. And so even if you're going to be postponing it a little bit from where you were, it's still not healthy long term. And for heart disease, the number one killer in the United States, obviously eating high fat is not what you want. And eating especially dairy products and meat products is not what you want whenever you're trying to prevent heart disease. People who tell you that sugar causes heart disease 
There's no documentation, none whatsoever. Doctors out there are reversing heart disease, preventing it with a whole foods plant-based diet. So we need to really look into what works. Nobody's doing that with a keto diet. You know, there are things that a keto diet helps with, but they don't even know why. In that case, how can you even say that's what's helping? Because as I was going to say, a lot of these studies, it's not just a keto diet. You're, what you're seeing is a headline that says, or a write-up of a keto bloggers doing a write-up of a study that has the word keto in it, but they're also using a low calorie diet. So a lot of what you, a lot of what you're seeing again is just like starvation diets or very, very, very low calorie diets. And we know that if you go off of the things that you're on, if you're eating a bunch of meat and dairy, and you go off these things by cutting back on those calories, then obviously, so, so people are promoting keto, eat as much meat and dairy as you want, but then they're, they're not adding in that low calorie piece. You know what I mean? And that's just one of the many things that is wrong with the keto bloggers promoting these studies. I've seen keto bloggers do the same thing that Weston A. Price does, and they will take a study that says something else of bad about keto, and they will list it in their list of references just to make it look like they have backup because they know darn good and well that people who are looking for backup about their bad habits, good news about their bad habits, are not going to go and study the links. People want to be told it's okay to go to Burger King. If they have to sacrifice the bread to still get a few burgers and satisfy, honestly, what they're addicted to, it's not your natural taste buds. You know, we don't wait, we don't, even breast milk, what we're naturally, you know, made to eat when we're, when we're tiny, is tiny percentage of fat. It's like 5% fat. It's mostly sweet. It's sweeter than anything else because our bodies naturally want something sweet. So anyway, I will stop rambling. This is a super long video for the topic and just to be our intro video. But again, I've done a lot of research. I've been researching low carb for over five years now, um, or four and a half, at least four and a half years. No, I started researching Weston A. Price and low carb before. So it is over five years now. So, um, and I know how to read studies. I know how to do this. So if you have any questions, let me know. If you have any comments, let me know. If you want to ask anonymously, you can go to Tumblr. My Tumblr is just the same thing as my name. Um, I'm super happy to be talking to you guys about this stuff. So let me know how you feel about it. If you want to see more keto videos, give me a thumbs up. If not, give me a thumbs down. Um, take care. Don't forget to eat your fruit. And I'll talk to you later.